Multi-Factor Authentication, a video guide for setup and use for ECPS users. So what is multi-factor authentication? Well, MFA is a way to enhance our organization's security by requiring users to identify themselves by more than a username and a password. Since this additional layer of security requires multiple identification methods, ECPS will be using two. The first method is something that you know, such as your password. And the second factor will be something that you have. This is a personal device, such as the cell phone or iPad that you can carry with you for those authentication codes. As Escambia County moves users to multi-factor authentication, we're working to increase security for the information in our databases, control access to different platforms, and limit data risks. Let's get started. To complete the steps in this video, make sure that you have your work computer, the personal device you choose to use, and about 10 to 15 minutes for setup. To begin with step one, grab your work computer and access ECPS's advanced authentication site as shown on this screen. For easier access, check out the description below. Step two is to enter credentials on the authentication site. It will first ask you for your username where it says repository user and you will type your short ECPS username. I'm using Mickey Mouse for this example. Then click next and type your password in the following box. This will bring you to step three where it's time to choose an authenticator method. You have two options here. Option A is our SMS OTP method, which is going to be a simple text message to your personal device. Option B is going to be a TOTP method, using an authenticator app for a time-based one-time passcode. Steps for both methods will be shown in this video, so select one for now and you may add an additional one later. If you selected to add option A, the SMS one-time passcode method, this will send a text message to your personal device. On the following screen, you will enter your phone number, make sure it's your personal cell phone number, and then double check for accuracy before saving. As soon as you click save, this option will be enabled. If you chose to add option B, the time-based one-time passcode method, you will have to follow some additional steps. Before moving forward, grab your personal device and download an authenticator app such as Google Authenticator. To complete the steps for TOTP Authenticator, grab your personal device and open the app that you've downloaded on your phone. Looking at this page on your work computer, you may see a comment field. This is optional if you would like to write the name of the Authenticator app you used. Ignoring the token serial field, we'll move to the next one where it says OTP. We're going to use our Google Authenticator app to scan the QR code shown on your screen. Once scanned, your Authenticator app will provide you with a six-digit code that you will enter on this screen next to the field OTP. Once that is complete, click Save. Congratulations! You've successfully added an authentication method. To view your additional options, you can see those under Add Authenticator, or to see what you're currently using and make changes, you can view those under Enrolled Authenticators. So when will multi-factor authentication be necessary? As we move forward, we'll see that many of these platforms that house confidential or secure information will require MFA, such as Focus, Kronos, Schoolnet, Zendesk, Canvas, Skyward, and more to come. When accessing these platforms, you'll be required to provide the multiple forms of authentication. Your first will be your district credentials, your username and password, and that second form will be the code from your authentication method you've selected. Once your district credentials are entered, you'll then enter your authentication code. If you have both options enabled, you'll select one first before moving forward. You will then enter the code provided from your selected authentication method, and then click Next. If you have enabled the SMS OTP method, you'll enter the code from the text that you receive. With the TOTP method, you'll look in your Authenticator app and enter the code provided. For security purposes, these codes are time sensitive and a new code will need to be requested if not entered promptly. You have now successfully enrolled in and used multi-factor authentication. Please remember to keep your personal device on you and secure. This way, you're able to use that for your second form of authentication. The IT service desk will not be able to respond immediately to request for left personal devices, but they can assist in emergency lockout situations. All those codes are time sensitive and should be entered promptly. Periods of inactivity at your computer will require a new code to enter those secure platforms. And finally, using multi-factor authentication does not make personal devices subject to public disclosures. Setup is now complete. Thank you for your help in increasing the security for our district platforms.